Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the vertical line charts practice questions. If you need extra help on vertical line charts, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheet section and scroll down to video number 148C, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on vertical line charts. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says the chart shows the number of goals scored by Finn in 25 football matches. So if we have a look here at this vertical line chart, we've got the number of matches going vertically and then horizontally we've got the number of goals scored. So in terms of goals scored in three matches, he scored no goals. He scored one goal in... 11 matches he scored two goals in four matches he scored three goals in six matches and in one match he scored four goals and if we have a look here it says how many times did finn score no goals so no goals that would be three matches so three matches three times so let's write that down three okay next part b part b says how many times did finn score more than two goals so more than two goals so more than two goals would be three goals and four goals because it's more than two so in six matches he scored three goals and one match he scored four goals so that'd be altogether seven matches there's seven matches where he scored more than two goals so let's write that down seven so six plus one is equal to seven so seven games and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So question number two said, Scarlet rolls an ordinary dice 30 times and the chart shows the results. So she rolls this dice 30 times and she gets one three times, she gets a two seven times, she gets a three five times, a four eight times, a five two times and a six five times. And the question says, part A says, how many times was the number on the dice of five? So the number shown on the dice of five, that'd be two times. So it's shown twice. So she rolled the dice 30 times and she got two number fives. So two. Okay, part B. Part B says, which number was shown on the dice a total of seven times? So seven times, that's when the frequency is seven. So as you can see here, the number two appeared on the dice seven times. So whenever she rolled 30 times, seven number twos appeared. So that's going to be number two. And then part C. Part C says which two numbers were shown on the dice the same number of times? So the same number of times, so that's when the frequencies will be the same. Well, one appeared three times. Well, no over number appeared three times. Two appeared seven times. No over number appeared seven times. A three appeared five times. And if you look here, so does a six. So three and six both appear five times. So they appear the same number of times, three and six. So they're the two numbers, three and six. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says, Mrs. Thomas asks all the students in her class their shoe size, and the vertical line chart shows the results. So we've got the number of students going up vertically and the shoe size going across horizontally. So three students had a size two, six students had a size three, and so on. And part A says, how many students had a shoe size of four? So shoe size of four, that is five students. So that's five. Okay, part B. Part B says, which shoe size is the mode? So the mode, remember, is the most common. So that's the most common shoe size. So this is going to be the one with the highest vertical line. So as you can see here, six students have a shoe size of three. So that means the, the mode is three. That's if you were to write down a list of all the shoe sizes. You'd write down three number twos, six number threes, five number fours, five number fives, and two number sixes. And three would be the number that appears the most. So the most common shoe size, the mode, is a three. And we find that by looking for the highest vertical line. So that's three. And part C, part C says how many students are in her class. So if we go back up to the question, it doesn't tell us how many students are in the class, but we know that she asks all the students in the class their shoe size. So we know that there's three students got a shoe size of two. So that's three that have got a shoe size of two. Six have got a shoe size of three, so plus six. And then in terms of size four, five, so plus five, and then plus another five and then plus two. So if we add up all the numbers of students for those shoe sizes, that'll tell us how many students are in the class. So three plus six is equal to nine, plus five is equal to 14, plus five is equal to 19, plus two is equal to 21. So that means there's 21 students in the class. And we find that by just adding up all the frequencies or adding up all the number of students for each of the vertical lines. So the answer is 21. And our method for that was three plus six plus five plus five plus two. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, Rebecca spins the spinner below 20 times. So she spins this spinner 20 times, and it's got the numbers five, six, seven, and eight on the spinner. And Rebecca then draws a chart to show some of the results, and the chart is incomplete. So this chart is incomplete. And we've got the number that it lands on being a five. Well, it lands on a five six times. It lands on a six two times. It lands on a seven five times. And we've been asked to complete the chart, so we need to do the vertical line for the number eight. So let's find out how many number eights it would be. Now we're told in the 
question she spanned it 20 times. So that means if we add up the frequencies, four, five, six, and seven, that tells how many number of times it landed on a five, a six, or a seven, and then the rest of them must be the number eight. So it landed on a five, six times, it landed on a six two times and it landed on a seven five times so if we add those up we'll see how many times it landed in those numbers so six plus two is equal to eight plus five is equal to 13. so that's 13 spins so altogether she spun it 20 times and if we take away the 13 that'll tell us how many must be left so that's equal to seven so it means it lands on the number eight seven times so you get your ruler and pencil and then draw a vertical line going from seven down to the number eight like so and that's it so we've completed that chart that vertical line chart and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five says, a class of students attempt an examination question, and the question is worth five marks. So they can get zero marks, one mark, two marks, three marks, four marks, five marks. And the vertical line chart shows information about the marks awarded. So we've got the number of students, and then going up vertically, and we've got the number of marks awarded, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So these students, these eight students, got full marks on that question. Okay, and so let's have a look at our first question. Our first question says, write down the modal number of marks awarded. So we're looking for the number of marks that appears the most. So to do that, we're going to look at our vertical line chart, and we're going to look at the vertical line that's the highest. So here, only one student got a zero, so only one student got no marks, so it's definitely not that one. And if we look at this line here, this vertical line, it's the highest one, so it's got the highest frequency. So that means the modal mark would be a five. The most common mark that students got was a five, because there was eight students that achieved five marks. There's only six that achieved four marks. There was seven that achieved three marks, three that achieved two marks, five that achieved one mark, and one student that achieved no marks. So the mode would be five. That's the most common number of marks achieved, so five. Okay, our next part. Our next part says, the teacher chooses one of the students at random from the class. Write down the probability that the student scored less than three marks. So let's see how many students there are all together. The question actually doesn't tell us how many students there are all together, so we need to work out how many students there are. So there's one student that achieved no marks. There were five students that achieved one mark, so plus five, plus another three students, plus another seven students, plus six students, and plus another eight students. So if we add together those numbers, that'll tell us how many students are in the class. So let's do that. One plus five is equal to six, plus three is equal to nine, plus seven is equal to 16, plus six is equal to 22, plus eight is equal to 30. So there's 30 students in the class altogether. So whenever the teacher chooses one at random, that means they're choosing out of the 30 students. That means that 30 is gonna be on the denominator. And this is right down the probability that the student scores less than three marks. So let's see how many students obtain less than three marks. So less than three marks would be two marks, one mark, or no marks. So in terms of less than three marks, so let's add these together and see what we get. So three students got two marks, plus five students got one mark, plus one student got no marks. So let's add those up and see what we get. Three plus five is equal to eight, plus one is equal to nine. So that means that nine students got less than three marks. So in terms of the probability, she's choosing one of these 30 students who want the probability that they get less than three marks, that's gonna be nine out of 30. So let's write that down, nine thirtieths. Now you could actually leave your answer like that, but we could cancel this down if we wanted to. Both of these numbers are divisible by three. Nine divided by three is three, and 30 divided by three is equal to 10. So the probability that the student has scored less than three marks would be three tenths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. So question number six is, a football manager recorded the number of yellow cards his team received during each match one season. So in four matches, no yellow cards were received by his team. In seven matches, his team received one yellow card in total. In six matches, his team received two yellow cards in total. And in two matches, three yellow cards were given out. And the question says to draw a vertical line chart to show this information. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put number of yellow cards going across horizontally. So zero, one, two, three. And going up vertically will be the number of matches or the frequency so let's do that okay so i've labeled the horizontal axis and the vertical axis so we've got number of yellow cards going across horizontally and vertically the number of matches so if we have a look at the number of matches the highest number of matches was seven so we need to go up to at least seven there's so going to be zero one two three four five six seven i might as well put eight there and the number of yellow cards well let's do zero one two three so that's going to cross horizontally like so now we need to do the vertical lines so the first one zero yellow cards four matches so we need to go up to four so let's do that so that's the first one zero yellow cards four times now one yellow card seven times so that vertical line is going to have a height of seven so we're going to go from seven down like so Next, two yellow cards, six matches, so six matches will be there, and then down. And then three yellow cards, that was two matches, so that would look like that. And that's it, that's our vertical line chart. 
Okay, so question number seven says 15 contestants take part in a talent show and the chart shows information about the number of points they scored. So we've got the number of points going across horizontally and frequency going up vertically. So one person got two points, no people got three points, one person got four points, two people got five points, three people got six points, four people got seven points, two people got eight points, one person got nine points and one person got ten points. And then part A says work out the range of the points scored. So the highest number of points scored was ten, the lowest number of points scored was 2 so we're going to do 10 take away 2 and that's equal to 8 so the range of the points scored was 8 so that's 8. Part B work out the median number of points scored so in terms of the median number of points scored what I'm going to do is I'm going to list these so one person got a 2 so one person got a 2 one person got a 4 two people got 5 so 5 and 5 three people got 6s so 6 6 6 four people got 7 so 7 7 7 7 Two people get eight, so eight and eight. One person got nine, and one person got 10. Now we want to find the median, so cross off the smallest, cross off the biggest, cross off the smallest, cross off the biggest, the smallest, 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 the biggest, and we're left with seven in the middle. So the median number of points scored was seven. That's it. So that's that question done. We've completed that question. We found the range of the points being eight. We found the median number of points scored being seven. And that method, you could have written it down there in that section for question B, but I just put it up there so we could see the chart. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number eight. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So question number eight says, Tomas spins a spinner with five sections a number of times. So he spins this spinner a number of times. We don't know how many times. And the chart shows information about the number of times it lands on a two and a five. So it lands on a two. 11 times and it lands on a five three times and then the question says Tomas says the number one occurs three times as many times as the number five well the number five appeared three times the number one occurred three times as many so that's going to be three times three so three times three will be equal to nine so that means that it lands on the number one nine times he then says the number three occurs so the number three occurs two more times than the number four well, we don't actually know those numbers yet. And he spun the spinner a total of 35 times. Now, that could be quite useful. I've been asked to complete the chart. Well, let's actually do the vertical line for number one to begin with. We know that's nine because it occurred three times as many times as the number five. The number of five occurred three times, and three times three is equal to nine. So let's do that first vertical line for the number one. So nine, and then down to the number one, and that's that. Okay, next, we need to find the frequencies for three and four. Now, we're told the spinner has spun a total of 35 five times well let's see how many times it's been spun for these numbers so nine plus eleven plus three so nine plus eleven plus three nine plus eleven is equal to twenty plus three is equal to twenty three so it lands on the numbers one two and five a total of twenty three times it spanned thirty five times if we do thirty five take away twenty three that's equal to twelve so that means it must land on these two numbers the number three and number four twelve times in total now it says that the number three occurred two more times than the number four so this number must be two bigger than that one so you need to find two numbers that add together to be 12 where one of them is two bigger than the other one now i know straight away it's going to be seven and five because seven plus five is equal to 12 and that number is going to be two bigger than that one so that's going to be seven and that's going to be five so it lands on the number three seven times and it lands on the number four five times because they add together to be the 12 that we needed and one's two bigger than the other if you couldn't remember that you could actually form an equation you could say it lands on the number four x times and it lands on the number three two more times so that'd be x plus two because that's two more than x we add them together so x plus two plus x that'll be two x's plus two because x plus x is two x is plus two so two x plus two is equal to 12 because it lands on those 12 times we then take away two and take away two and we get the two x equals 10 and divide by two and divide by two we get the x is equal to five because 10 divided by two is equal to five and that means that it lands on the number four five times and it lands on the number three two more times that's going to be seven times so then let's complete the chart so it lands on the number three seven times so let's start a vertical line going from seven down to the number three like so and it lands on the number four five times so that would look like that so that's our vertical line chart Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. So question number nine says, Yvette asked some of his customers how many pets they owned. And the chart shows the results. So uh, we've got 16 customers that own one pet. If we have a look here, we've got number of customers and pets owned. So 16 customers had one pet. 10 customers own two pets. Seven customers own three pets. Six customers own four pets. Eight customers own five pets. No customers own six pets. 
two customers own seven pets and one customer owns eight pets. And part A says write down the modal number of pets owned. So the modal number of pets owned, that's gonna be the one with the highest frequency or the highest vertical line. So as you can see, the modal number of pets owned will be one, that's the most common, the most common number of pets owned by those customers was one. Okay, part B, part B says work out the mean number of pets owned. So that's the mean. So what we need to do is we need to work out how many pets there are in total and divide it by the number of pet owners and that'll be the mean number of pets owned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a table. So I'm gonna make a table, I'm gonna write pets owned, so pets owned, and then I'm gonna write frequency. So I'm making a little frequency table and if you've looked at the meme from a frequency table, that's gonna be a really useful topic for this question. If you need to go back to Cork Mavs and watch the video on mean from a frequency table, that might be really useful. So we've got pets owned and frequency. So in terms of pets owned, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We don't actually need to write six, but I'm gonna write it anyway. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's the number of pets owned. And in terms of the frequencies, they are 16, 10, and seven. Let's write those down to begin with. So 16 own one pet, 10 own two pets, and seven own three pets. And let's go back up again. We've then got six, eight, and zero. So six, eight, and zero, six, eight, and zero. And the last two frequencies are two and one. So two, and one. So we've got our frequency table, and we want to find the mean number of pet zones. So we want to find the mean from this frequency table. Now you could do it where you write down 16 number ones, 10 number twos, seven number threes, six number fours, eight number fives, zero number sixes, two number sevens, and one number eight, and find the mean of that list of numbers, and that's fine as well. Or there's a bit of a shortcut. We could add on a column called the FX column. And if we had 16 number ones written down in a list, well, 16 number ones added together would be 16. And one times 16, if we times these together, one times 16 is equal to 16. So 16 number ones, if we add them all up together, that's 16 pets. 10 pet owners own two pets. So if we wrote down a list of 10 number twos, if we add them all up, that'll be 20. And 10 times two, 10 times two is equal to 20, or two times 10 or 10 times two is equal to 20. So that means that for these 10 pet owners that own two pets, the grand number of pets would be 20. Now we're just gonna carry on. We're gonna do three times seven is equal to 21. Four times six is equal to 24. Five times eight is equal to 40. Six times zero, where there's no pet owners that own six pets, so that's gonna be six times zero is equal to zero. Two times seven is equal to 14. And one times eight is equal to eight. So this tells us how many pets are owned. We've got 16 people that own one pet, so that's 16 pets altogether. 10 people own two pets, that's 20 pets altogether, and so on. So let's add those all up to get the grand total of the number of pets owned. And this is a calculator question, so you can do it in your calculator. So 16 plus 20 plus 21 plus 24 plus 40 plus 14 plus 8 is equal to 143. So there's 143 pets altogether. So that's how many pets are all together. Now we wanted to work out the mean number of pets owned, so we were gonna add them all up and then divide by the number of numbers. That's gonna be the number of pet owners, because if you're down 16 number ones, 10 number twos, all together, if we add up the frequencies, that tells how many pet owners there are, or how many numbers there'll be in the list. So 16 plus 10 plus seven plus six plus eight plus two plus one, and that's equal to, if we add those up, that's equal to 50. So that means that altogether there's 143 pets and there's 50 pet owners. So if we do 143, the grand total, divided by how many numbers there are or how many pet owners there are, so 143 divided by 50, that's equal to 2.86. So that means the mean number of pets owned was 2.86. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at the video solutions to the vertical line charts practice questions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you want any extra help in vertical line charts, if you go to the videos and worksheets section on Corbett Mavs and you go to video number 148C, that's a dedicated video tutorial there on vertical line charts. In this video, we we'll focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So if you found it useful, please like the video and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers.